For this pattern, I used Lion Brand jeans in khaki. I used between two and three skeins to make the pattern, and that'll depend on which size you use and the length. Scissors, a tapestry needle for sewing in ends and seaming, a stitch marker, and then I used two different crochet hooks. For most of the body, I used the 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and you can use this solely if you so choose, but I wanted mine to narrow in a little bit along the waist. So for several inches, I changed from the 5.5 to a five millimeter crochet hook. To begin this project, I've made a chain of 90 stitches plus one, so a total of 91 stitches. So I'm gonna begin by working single crochets into the back bump by skipping the, the stitch closest to me. So if you're not sure what the back bump is, let me take a second and show you. So you have your normal chain here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn it over, and you can see these little back loops right here. So a loop there, a loop there, and that's gonna be our first loop, whoops, right over here. So I'm gonna begin by doing my first single crochet into that back loop. And sometimes the first one is a little tricky um, as you begin, but it usually gets easier. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Then I'm gonna to go to the next one. So I'm gonna go into that back loop, pull through, next. Yarn over, pull through for two loops, and then yarn over for my single crochet. If you're not sure how to do a single crochet, I do have a link. Um, I'll put a link below so that you can actually see that video tutorial and learn how to do it. For this pattern, you will need to know how to do a um, how to do a single crochet, a half double crochet, and a double crochet, all of which I'll link below, as well as our special um, star stitch or starburst stitch. So I'm gonna continue working these single crochets all the way to the end, and then I'll meet you back. Here I am coming now to my last single crochet, and I went ahead and, whoops, make that single crochet all the way through. And now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my chains. So I'm gonna run this whole thing, make sure it's super straight and that we don't have um, any twists. So it's nice and even. I can hook my fingers all the way there and I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch. Um, and I'm gonna slip stitch into both loops, just like that pull through and then slip together. And what I'll probably do is I'll go back and use this, this tail right here to really connect it. But for now, I think we're okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and chain three, one, two, three. And without turning my work, I'm going to start on this first um, part of the starburst pattern. So I've chained three. I'm going to skip the first chain from the hook. I'm gonna work into the second one. I'm gonna go through it yarn over, pull through. Now I have two loops on my chain. Go through the third, yarn over, pull through. So now I have three. And then I'm gonna start working only in the back loops of my project. So you can see that this is the whole chain right there and I'm only gonna work in this back loop, in this back loop. For the rest of this whole entire um, neckline, I'm going to only work in the back loop. So I have three loops on my chain. I'm gonna go ahead and don't forget you have this one that you started where you slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through for four, and then yarn over, pull through for five. So now I have five loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all five. And then I'm going to immediately yarn over and pull through that one loop. And that's gonna give me my first star pattern. So we're gonna continue building on this. And the way that we do that is you actually work right back into that center of the star. So you can see the center is right there. Right there. I'm gonna go ahead and go right back into there. That And that's gonna make yarn over, pull through, that's gonna make the second loop. And then going back to that same stitch that I used before, I go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, I have three, and then I'm gonna pick up the next two. Yarn over, pull through, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, so now I have five. Going to yarn over and pull through all five, 
and then remember to you kind of bring them all together. So you can see the eye a little bit better or the center right there a little bit better um, with the second one. So again, to continue, go right back into that center, yarn over, pull through for two loops. We're gonna find the, um, the second stitch that we took and we're gonna go through there, yarn over, pull through for three and then the next two. So four and five and this fifth one here, or the one that gives us our fifth loop here, that is the same stitch that we go back to build the next star on. So remember this stitch right here. So yarn over, pull through all five, and then yarn over, tighten it together, and then we're gonna go back into our center, pull through into that last loop right there where we picked up number five before, and now we have three. And now we're gonna go back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and we have five loops on our chain, pull through all five, and then yarn over, pull through. And you can see how the bottom half of this pattern is coming together. And by working the back loops, we're actually giving it a pretty border right here. I'm gonna do one more, we'll do one more together. Um, so remember, go right back into your center, yarn over, pull through, into your last stitch that you did, yarn over, pull through for three, and now we're gonna do our back loop, so of the next two. So there's number four and there's number five. I have one, two, three, four, five loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all five, and then yarn over one more time to connect them. Okay, so you can see I have five. Um, I should have about, since I started off with 90 stitches, I should have 45 of these by the time I'm done. So I'm gonna go back around and meet you, and then we'll go on to creating the top part of our starburst. I'm finished up with my row of the bottom part of my starburst, and I'm on my last one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull through five, do my last lot to make my center, and then I'm gonna link it up here because this is gonna be the neckline of our top and I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the top stitch here. And what I want you to, to consider, um, and we'll take a look at this, is that on each of these bottom parts of the starburst, there's your center hole, and then there's the stitch next to it. So there's only two that make up the starburst pattern, so one and two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of that to build the rest of the star. I'm going to chain two and turn my work. Now you will have a little seam here like I mentioned, but this is gonna be the back part of our top so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my star which is right there. You can see if you have trouble, look on this side, you can see it there. I'm going to do a half double crochet now. So I'm gonna go through that center, pull up. I have three loops on my chain. I'm going to pull through all three. And that is the first part of this. Now right next to it is that next stitch that you can see here. There are both of those loops. I'm going to go ahead and do a half double crochet in there. So now I have two half double crochets. I'm going to continue on back into the center, half double crochet, and then into the two loops next to it into the next the next stitch and if you're ever having a problem just instead of looking at your work this way turn your work this way it'll help um, for the center I think you can see it really clearly on this view so I'm going to go in there and do my half double crochet and then if I'm having a problem I can look and see right there is the next loop and I can show it to you with the tapestry needle you wanna make sure to grab both of these loops. So we're gonna go in there next, half double crochet, and you can see now how that's coming together really pretty. I'm gonna do a few more. So you can see, I'm gonna yarn over, go through the center, pull through. I have three loops, pull through all three, yarn over, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops, half double crochet. And then 
we're gonna do this till we get all the way around to the back and then we'll slip stitch to join. So I'm gonna continue on and I will meet you back here once I'm done with that. So I've just finished my last half double crochet and I cut off um, the yarn and pulled it through to finish our work. And I'll go ahead and weave that in um, and it'll probably lay flatter once that's done too. And so now I have my really pretty neckline here. And this is gonna be what we're gonna build the body off of for the rest of our work. So I've gone ahead and also placed two stitch markers. So counting from here, I have counted 15 over and placed a stitch marker, and then 15 over and placed a stitch marker. Um, remember this is 90, so coming off from the back is going to be, we're gonna stitch 30 here on this side and 30 here on this side. So to get there, I'm gonna count 15 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and place my stitch marker right there in front of it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And we're gonna go count to 15, that's five, 10, 15, and then go right in front. And so now we have what should be pretty even, yep. There you go, so this is where we're gonna build the body off of. I'm gonna start by going ahead and seaming this in and then I'll meet you back. So I've gone ahead and tied my yarn on to where my first stitch marker is, and I'm gonna go through there and pull through, and then I'm going to chain two. Now this chain two doesn't count as anything, I'm just gonna use that to begin the pattern. And for this first row, we're gonna be working in the back loop only, and that again is to make the neckline stand out. So I'm gonna start working double crochets in the back loop only. So in this first one, it's a bit tricky because we tied our yarn, but I went through and then double crochet. And just to show you again, so this is our neck. Those are our chains. I'm going to yarn over, go through the back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two for my double crochet. Yarn over, back loop, and double crochet. And so I'm gonna do this until I get to my other stitch marker, and then I'll meet you back. Here I am at the second stitch marker for the back portion, and I'm going to go ahead and do my double crochet in the back loop of this, and finish it out. And you can see how it's starting to come together. And now I'm going to chain two and turn my work. And so from here on out, I will not be doing back loops. I'll be going through the full chain. And we will be doing increases um, in, every single, in every single beginning and end. So I'm gonna go ahead, and again, this chain two doesn't count as anything. I'm going to do a double crochet, and then another double crochet right into there. And then I'm gonna continue doing double crochets into both loops, don't forget, both loops now until I get to the end, and then I'm going to do an increase at that end too. And what we're doing is for this pattern is we're going to be having on both the front and the back, the pattern is going to, let me get rid of this to show you, is going to come out and then we'll connect it. This area here is the area over the arms. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll connect this and um, this will go underneath our arms and then we'll make the body. And when we get to the body part, we will be working in the round. So, oops, I pulled it out by accident. So just to continue working, we're going to do our half double, or our double crochets all the way. So I'm gonna go back to this end and I'll show you how I do my two increases for that and we'll turn our work. So I'm reaching the end of my second row, I'm continuing to work on my double crochets. And here I am, here's the last one. I'm gonna go ahead and in this one, I'm going to do two double crochets. So that's one and two. And then I'm going to chain two, turn my work. And in this first stitch, we're gonna go ahead and work two double crochets. And so you see what that's doing is it's creating an angle that's gonna come off to um, go 
underneath our arms eventually. So I'm gonna continue doing this for several more rows. I'm going to increase always um, at the beginning and at the end of each row with two. And I'm gonna work on this for several more inches and then I'll meet you back. Hello all, I'm back. Here is my um, back area and I have done 11 rows of double crochets and then I've tied off. What I did, then did was I went to the front of my work and I did the same thing where I started with a row of double crochets, back loop only to bring the chain to the front. And I did, in this case, I did so back loop only for the first row and then 11 more rows of just double crochets. So this side has 12 rows. And the reason for that is we're going to start here at this corner where I have my stitch marker and we're gonna connect over to this side um, to make the arm area, the armhole area the, on both sides. So this has 12 rows and when we connect over, we'll then begin the 12th row here and then do another row of chains on this corner and connect. So basically this corner right here is going to be um, where our our starting point is for this for the sweater as we start working in the round, and we'll probably put a stitch marker there to help us keep track of exactly where we are. So I'm going to chain six on each side. So if we look one, two, three, four, five, six, basically about this length is what I'm going to do to connect the arms. So I'm going to remove my stitch marker. So remember, this is row twelve. And when we chain six, we're gonna connect over here and then be begin row 12 on the back panel. So I'm gonna chain one, two, three, four, five, six. And what I highly recommend at this point is that you take your own measurements and you see exactly what your size is. So for me, about an inch and a half or so is going to, I think, be perfect um, to get under my arms. And then what I'm gonna do is, so taking my piece, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to come over here and we're going to slip stitch into this into this last double crochet over here. It may help if you weave in your ends, but if you haven't, don't worry. It's gonna be just fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and chain two, just like we were starting I'm gonna go ahead and chain two, just like we were starting a new row. And I'm gonna start by going in and double crocheting. And because I've done an increase on this side for this row, I will also do an increase on each end of the back panel. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just into each double crochet, each double crochet from the previous row into each stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and double crochet. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I get to the end. And then we're going to chain six again to connect to the other side. And I'll show you that when I get there. So I'm coming to the last stitch here um, on the back panel row 12 and remember, we're gonna be doing an increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an increase here. And then I'm going to chain six. Three, four, five, six. And at this point, I'd recommend flipping your work. And you're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the corner of the front panel here. And then I'm gonna chain two. And then I'm going to work a double crochet into this first stitch. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually not gonna do any increases going forward. So for row 13, I'm just gonna go ahead and double crochet in every stitch. And then I'm going to double crochet into each chain here for a total of six, and then I'll slip stitch it here. And like I mentioned before, this will be our, our corner. So to keep track of that, I'm gonna go ahead and remember I chained two. So this double crochet is actually our first stitch right there. So that's it. So I'm gonna continue going with my double crochets all the way around 
and when I get to the chain space I will show you um, when I get to the chains I should say I will show you what I do to continue going and working in the round so I'm just coming to our first chain area that connects the underarms of our sleeves and remember we made six chains so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we double crochet six times throughout this chain area so that it gives us the right amount of stitches that we need to continue our pattern so whoops i got a little split area there so i'm going to go ahead and do one two get a little bit more yarn three four five and then six and that should take us right back to our underarm area. And remember in this area, um, this was a increase. So we do have um, two double crochets here. So you don't wanna go into this area here. You wanna make sure that you're following um, the actual double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over and go into our first stitch and then into, so this is stitch number one. This was our chain two that we doesn't count as anything. This is our stitch number one, which we went into on top, and now we're gonna go into the second one right there. So now we have connected that underarm and we have um, our halter, the arm that goes with our halter, as you can kind of see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue all the way around and what I'll do is I'll show you how to connect to um, our starting point, okay? So here we are coming up on the sixth chain for the second arm opening. And I had put a stitch marker right here where I started. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch into there. And now at this point, we're going to chain two and we're going to turn our work. So I still have my stitch marker in that first stitch, which is what we slip stitched into. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that, and I'm going to yarn over and go into the next stitch. And I'm going to do my double crochet. And I made sure that I had six stitches going across this arm area. So again, there should be six. So I'm on two, three, four, five, and then our last one right there is six. And then we're just gonna continue across. And I've left the stitch marker here to remind me that I haven't done a stitch in here. I have this chain two, um, which could, which. Some people like to have that act as a um, as their turning chain, and in, in that case, you would go ahead and slip stitch into the top here, but we're gonna do something a little bit different when we come around. So I'll meet you around, and I'll show you how we're gonna do um, our turning stitch. So I'm gonna work all the way across till we get back to the stitch marker. So I've reached the area where my stitch marker is for the end of my row and I'm going to go ahead and double crochet into that stitch marker even though we have already done a chain two and this is the chain two. I'm going to skip the top of that chain two and go into the top of my first stitch. I'm going to go into the top of my first stitch and slip stitch into there and what that's going to do is it's going to prevent there from being any gap um, where you've gone ahead and slip stitch so I'm going to chain two turn my work but before I turn my work I'm going to go ahead and undo this and I'm going to slip stitch now onto this side where I, I had or I'm going to put my stitch marker into 
this where I had slip stitched into. So I know that that's gonna be my last chain and I'm gonna skip this chain two and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my work. I'm gonna go ahead and work a few more rounds um, just like this and then I'll come meet you back because I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook down to a five millimeter crochet hook just to make it a little bit more um, tighter around the waist because that's what I want for my particular um, pattern. So I've come to the end of row 15 and I'm at our stitch marker. I'm going to go ahead and do a half double crochet into the area of the stitch marker and then remember I'm going to skip the chain two and work into the first half double crochet and slip stitch into there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put aside my five and a half millimeter crochet hook and pull in my five millimeter crochet hook. I like a little bit more of a fitted waist. So for the waist section of this top, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller hook size um, in hopes that it'll tighten it up a little bit and it won't be as loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain two, turn my work. I'm going to move my stitch marker now to the stitch that I put my chain two in and I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna continue working um, with the five millimeter crochet hook and I'm gonna do several rounds um, until I get to the end of my waistline. I just put in my last double crochet for row 23 and I'm gonna go ahead and slip stitch. Oops. Go ahead and slip stitch in there. And um, I wanted to show you exactly where I was in stopping. So I'm gonna just take off my stitch marker and place it here so I don't accidentally take out everything. But this is so far what our top looks like. And I guess if you wanted a crop top, this would be a good place to to go ahead and stop, but I'm gonna continue on because mine is gonna be um, kind of a, a regular length pattern. Um, but you can see here, I don't know if I can zoom out anymore, that you can see that there's kind of a taper here, and that is done from going ahead and switching from the five and a half um, millimeter crochet hook down to the five. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my five and a half millimeter crochet hook. And, and this is totally preference for me. Um, I wanted a little bit of flare and then I wanted to kind of go back out narrow and, and go back out wider. So I'm gonna switch back to this regular hook and I'm gonna do that until I get to the length I want to reach. Once I get to that length, we're gonna put a border on the bottom that's going to match this starburst pattern and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll meet you back when we get to our final length to show you the next step. So I've just finished up my last row for me, which was 31 rows um, to get to the length that I wanted, um, knowing that I'm still gonna add a little bit of a border. So I have gone ahead and done my 31 rows, I've slip stitched, and now at this point I've taken the time to go ahead and make sure I've counted my chains to make sure I have an even number. So a lot of times when you're crocheting, if you're like me, I'm watching TV, um, you know, relaxing, and sometimes you'll add a stitch or you will um, lose a stitch someplace. So before you finish your last row, go ahead and count your chains and see if you have the right number of even stitches. If you don't, if you have too many, go ahead and do a double crochet two together to bring your number down. And if you don't have enough, if you're missing one, go ahead and add, um, do two double crochets into one of the stitches and you'll be fine. And trust me, nobody will notice with the sweater. So now I'm gonna go ahead and chain two, or chain three actually, and I'm going to turn my work. And you really wanna make sure that at this point you are facing the right side to begin your star pattern. The reason for that is that um, the star pattern has to work facing you. So I've done my um, th chain of three and then I'm going to work into the second loop from the chain or from the hook, yarn over, pull through so that I have two loops on my chain, go into the next one, yarn over, pull through for three and then I'm gonna go ahead and work into 
the back loop only of the next chain, yarn over, pull through. So I have four, and again, the back loop only for the next one, yarn over, pull through. Now I have five. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through all five, and then kind of do, do my little next little yarn over, pull through to get the eye that I need. Now I'm going to go back into that eye, just like we did for the neckline, yarn over, pull through, go through the previous, the last stitch from the previous star, then go into the next two. And the reason I'm doing the back loop is again, I want this area to be defined by a border. So I can do that by doing the back loops. It'll help differentiate the last row of my double crochets. And then I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all five, and then yarn over, pull through to get my eye. And you can see that the, the first row of the star is being formed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more with you. I'm gonna go through the eye, yarn over, pull through, go through the last stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then the back loops of the next two. So I have four and then five. And now I have five loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all five, and then just go ahead and pull through to make your eye. So now I have three. I'm gonna continue doing this until I get back. Um, I'll meet you and then we'll begin to do the top half of our star. So I'm just about to do the last star for this row. And I'm going to go ahead and pull through all five, yarn over, pull through, and then I'm going to go ahead and join with the slip stitch into the first stitch there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and chain two and turn my work. And now we're working on the wrong side. And I'm gonna go ahead and if you look here um, where I've chained two, the star here is going to be the next place that I need to go in the little um, eye of the star. So I'm gonna yarn over, go through and do a half double crochet and you can see the star coming together. I'll do a couple more and then flip over my work and show you. Go through, and remember if you're not sure where you're supposed to go in, turn your work and look, um, but you will be going into the eye and then you will be going into the next stitch over. Half double crochet, yarn over, pull through all three, and then we're gonna go ahead and go into the next stitch. And you can see our star pattern is coming together and you can see the pretty border that it has there. So I'm gonna finish this side and then I'll meet you around when I'm done. I finished my last half double crochet, slip stitched into here. I'm going to chain one and turn my work and we'll show you what the border looks like. So you can see the pretty star pattern there. I'm just gonna do a row of single crochets. Uh, just to finish the border and this is going to be back loop only so i'm going to begin by going into the back loop and doing single crochets and this is really just to define the bottom border of the sweater and also to make the star pattern stand out a little bit more um, like there so i'm going to do a few more and i'll show you and you may notice that here where your border is, there's a little gap. So what I'm gonna do is when I come around and I slip stitch in there, I'm gonna leave a little bit of a longer tail and then go ahead and weave, um, seam that close so nobody will even see it. So I'm gonna continue. Going around with my single crochets. And just to show you, that's what your bottom border is gonna look like, which I think is very pretty. So I'm gonna go around, finish, do my seam, seam in all the rest of my ends, and then I'll show you what the final product looks like. So my top is done. Here is the top border. And I'm gonna try to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. So you can see here, this is our bottom hem. 
with the star pattern too. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can just go ahead and finish it out with um, you know double cro or double crochets until the end, and then just do a row of um, single crochets for the end. But I like the little added border. I think it's very very pretty and it just ties together the top and the bottom. You can also kind of see here the subtle indent that went from us changing to a five millimeter crochet hook and then going back to the 5.5. If you wanted um, a more distinct narrowing and less subtle, you could go down a, um, a whole um, single, a, a whole hook size so go from the 5.5 down to a 4.5 the only thing is you will get a really dramatic increase and even when you look at it from the top like right now it's um, difficult to tell exactly where I changed um, the the gauge but if you go with the smaller crochet hook it will be more noticeable um, so the sweater is all done I'm gonna go ahead and block it and then take some pictures and I hope you really really like this video and that you do try this pattern if you do please comment below and let me know how it goes I will also have the free crochet pattern that goes along with this top on my blog at um, the crafty crochet crocheteer.com and there'll be a link below Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe. I will be putting out videos regularly. Thank you again and happy crocheting.